Sunday, hey? God's day. And also long run day. My long run's like 5Ks, but we're getting there slowly. I got the new Pace Pro yesterday. That came in the mail. Pretty snazzy looking thing. Now I'm one of those idiots that wears two watches to test them out. Oh, also, my New Balance shoes are well and truly uh, worn in, thanks to this nice little mud puddle that I ran through this morning, but that's all right. We wear our shoes on this channel, don't we? Now today, I'm ticking off a video that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. So last week I did a video on zone two training. I think it was last week or it might be the week before. Um, but I talked about how I've been using more RPE or perceived exertion as a measure to measure, measure to measure my training intensity. And it occurred to me that there's like a thousand different ways of measuring your intensity and none of them really make sense. Well, they all make sense, but when you're using more than one to measure the intensity of your training, it gets really hard because Relatively speaking, how do they all correlate to each other? That is the question that I'm gonna answer in this video. So let's just fucking do it, eh? Yeah. Hey, mate. Now the first training zone, and probably the most objective actually, is which fuel source you're actually using to do your run. So there's a certain pace called your fat max where you can't go any faster than that unless you want to start burning more and more carbs and less and less fat. Pretty interesting, but you probably need to go to a lab to actually use this kind of intensity. It's a bit of an arbitrary Then the next one is lactate, or how much lactate are you producing and a specific intensity. And here's that kind of curve that everyone shows in all of their videos. Now, if you go to a lab, you can get very specific numbers of your lactate levels at different intensities, and you can use that to actually determine if your training is at the right intensity or not. But I've not done that, and I'm not gonna give you random numbers off the top of my head. We're just gonna stick with this general outline, and if you want to use this in your training, go to a lab. Math is your maximum aerobic function, meaning a pace that you can sustain that continues to be aerobic basically. So once you start to get into that steady zone or the carbs start to creep up in terms of utilizing that for energy, then that's when you're out of your math zone. So we have a math zone, not math zone, pretty simple. And then we have the three zone model, which is very similar to that lactate graph here. So zone one is described as you know, nothing basically, all the way up to just before LT1, where your baseline lactate levels creep up off that baseline basically. And as you get faster, you work your way through zone two, which is this threshold zone, until you get to a point where your lactate will spike out of the roof, and that will be your zone three stuff, okay? And here's another one, which is my personal favorite because it's pretty cool. It's critical velocity. Essentially, what it's saying is that there's a certain velocity that you have to run at, and you will be able to sustain for a certain amount of time. So if you were to do a seven hour race, this would be the exact pace that you would be able to maintain for seven hours just like you know lt is described as a 60 minute pace that would be your critical velocity for one hour would be your lactate threshold makes sense and now we're getting into the seven zone model essentially there's seven different zones from recovery pace all the way up to sprint pace and, and the definitions are very much kind of a bit airy fairy because there's five zone and seven zone and three zone and one zone all that stuff but what i like to do with this one is actually correlate that into something in English, something that you can actually use. So zone one would be recovery pace. Zone two would be easy. Zone three would be that steady zone where you're just a little bit faster than easy pace. And then zone four would be your whole threshold band. Zone five would be here, VO2 max. And then zone six and zone seven would be up in that 3K to sprinting, pretty epic. So here's another one that I use quite a lot, rated perceived exertion, RPE as people call it. It's basically a perceived you know, exertion level from one all the way to 10, with one being a recovery pace and 10 being an all out sprint full of lactate. So, you know, you can correlate one through 10 for these different kind of zones. You can even do it and compare it to the English zone, which I've done here. And another one that I've played around with quite a lot recently is power. Getting this new watch too, measuring the power on this, it's really cool and I really like it. The thing is about this data is that it takes into account my body weight and things like that. And so this is way not accurate for you, but you'd have to find your own zones and the way that I would probably do this is I would do like a 20 minute time trial or a 5k to get that zone and then kind of fill in the gaps 
going backwards and forwards, basically. It's pretty interesting. Another way that you can measure your trading intensity is by just going off strictly pace. So I put out my rough pace zones of when I actually did run quite a lot. Um, and as you can see, there's a massive variation from recovery all the way up to sprint. But the thing about this one is that it's really hard to get conditions right, and it's really hard to get the area in which you train to be consistent enough to use this as a reliable pace. So what I would say is that if you're doing intervals and stuff like that, you can use this only if you're on the same track and you have the same conditions. Otherwise, it's just gonna be all over the place, and I wouldn't recommend pacing your training intensities off pace. Doesn't make sense. And then obviously we have heart rate. So I put my heart rate values on here, but you can use heart rate calculators like the Carnivan scale and things like that that are gonna actually help you to find those right zones. And I've put this into like that five zone-ish model that I didn't really like above, but it's pretty straightforward for heart rate. Heart rate's really good. Just make sure that you're using a heart rate monitor that's actually accurate. Your wrist is not accurate at all. Make sure you get like an armband or a chest strap or something like that, just to make sure that this is actually an accurate way of measuring your training intensity. Now, another way that some people actually measure their training intensity is by correlating it into a certain effort level that correlates to a certain race. So people have their marathon pace or their 10K pace, 5K pace, and they use that feeling of what that race actually feels like to monitor their training. It's also quite a valid way of measuring your intervals and stuff like that, especially if you don't wanna get bogged down with pace and things like that, just going off effort relating to a specific race, that would be pretty cool. And the last one is ego, because a lot of people run to ego. I know that I've done that in the past, but everything's easy up to threshold, and that threshold feels pretty cruisy. And then you obviously have park run intensity, and then anything after park run intensity, that's when you're actually getting really fast. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. This was a fun one to make, and I'll see you guys at some point soon. Probably tomorrow, bye.